What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with Sheets, Eric, my man, Eric Sheets Aber. We're going to be talking through this week's uh, PGA slate. And uh, the good news is, right before we came on here, we can't play Emmanuel. We can't play Grillo because he was just uh, he was just announced out. So I don't have to worry about him costing me a bunch of money again. So that that was a nice thing to oh, see. Yeah. I haven't played golf in a while. Sheets, any sort of overall takes on this particular course slate? Uh, everything I'm well. What, what I would like to do is I'd like to share at least the Cliff's notes of okay. my conversation that I had with Rick last week. Um, so one of the things that I've noticed, and you know, and I've, I've done pretty well in golf the last couple of weeks. Actually, I didn't quite get there. Obviously, I would have you would have heard about it, but um, I'll tell you the projections and and the results have been very chalky um, for, for, for several, I mean, for like, it seems like months now. I, I, I was talking about this with, um, with Rick the other day. I mean, we, when we spoke, it was already Thursdays. So, you know, it was like Thursday. It was like half the, half the day was over already. And I showed him, I, and I, you know, last week I had Russell Henley as like clearly my best overall value, right? And this is what happens every week now. It's like, I, put, I post a thing, I said, he's my best overall value. He projects twelve percent ownership. He actually goes off nineteen, and he wins the he wins the he wins the tournament like literally every week. Seems that way, so it becomes very very difficult to 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 ownership fade and to get different. I mean, these models are seems to. I mean, just it's it's not it, it shouldn't be like this that mm -hmm. that that everything hits you know and and it's it's been like that you know for at least six weeks now. Um, so listen, part of that is kind of a brag to say, Hey, listen, follow my sheets and you'll get good plays. But then again, you know, at, at the GPPs, you still want to try to try to ownership fade, you know, and, 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 it, and it's been frustrating for people that have tried to do that over the last six weeks. So, um, just, uh, I don't know, just keep that. I'm still going to do it, you know, but, mm -hmm. but keep in mind, I mean, like when you see, here's another thing you could think, like, if you see like the top rated guy on my board at like 8% ownership, it's just not going to be the case, you know? And, mm -hmm. and, and it's funny because the ownership actually projections are tighter in golf than anything. Like, and I've, I've, I've studied my numbers for like forever. And, and, and even still, like they'll find that one guy that's miss that's misowned. You know what I mean? Like, like, and, uh, and punish it. You know what I mean? Like last week, I'm telling you the, the, the Russell Henley and not the other one, the, uh, the Joel Damon, the Joel Damon was 12 was 12%. Uh, projected and he went off 19 and, and like 34 in the snowman you know what i mean like mm -hmm. like like shit like wherever the top value is they just crush so mm -hmm. so i'm not saying automatically like reject the top value but don't get surprised if, if guys that that look good are just higher on than you think you know mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, i guess that's what we'll, we'll start um yep. as far as the course goes just you know it seems like a regular you know be good at golf type of course uh the 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 scoring has been you know maybe it's going to project to be minus minus 15 or something like that which is which is reasonable you don't have these minus minus 30s or anything like that and overall when you look at the slate you know you get this pretty big gap from shuffler down to the next guy as far as just like kind of like visual skill level you know what i mean it's just like what you think usually what you get is you either get the really good fields where like a bunch of good guys are at the top or when nobody's playing but you don't get too often the thing where one guy decides to just kind of show up and 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 and, and do this. So uh, we'll see where how that how that translates to actual playability and stuff. But that that's my oh, that's my my initial look at this thing. Yep, um, I, I totally hear you, and and I, and I that's one of the things that like it's it, I, I haven't been, maybe I'm, it's good I think I haven't been playing because I like to get really 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 yeah. way off the board with my golf yeah. lineups. Um, and I've got some guys here this week that I, that I did some, you know, a little bit of research on that I feel pretty good, good about that are going to be low owned. And, uh, just because there's players in their range that are just going to be, everyone's going to love. So I'm hoping, hopefully this will be the week that they can, they can, uh, I can get some of those, some of those high leverage ones. Meanwhile, you see who made a run last week, the general. I, I know, I know. And I, that, that's the one I was like, if he had won yes. it, I would have felt really bad, but yes. you know, that's, that's not going to happen too often anyway. Right. All right. Well, let's, let's, let's pull up your screen. Let's go, let's go by, by pricing tier and see if we can figure this thing out. Um, Cause it's, it is, it is like, it is weird. Cause I've got every, I mean, early projections I'm everybody I look at at the top looks like they're like going to be pretty heavily owned and that, can they all be heavily owned? I don't really understand how that's possible, but do you have the same sort of thing you're saying? I got Scheffler at 30% ownership. Um, yeah, I, I have seen much more than the others. I have him at thirty, and then I have you know Burns at twenty, Henley at eleven, uh, Hideki at eleven, 
Finau at 18. I mean, I, I have actually Scheffler garnering, you know, the lion's share of the ownership up there. Mm-hmm. And probably for good reason. Probably for good reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I'll sure. you, so, so we'll do this. So, so in, in the 10K range, um, I, I do, I do like, I all, I do like all of them except for obviously Hideki. Hideki just always just never, never does it for me. Um, so I do like all of them. I don't mind playing um, Henley even coming off the win. Um, uh, he's he's going to be the lowest owned. Him and Hideki of that of that group. So I don't mind that. Sheffler does rate to be the best for me, but I, I think I'm willing to take the um, the ownership discount and kind of fade the recency bias on Tony Finau and play him. He missed the cut uh, last week, which was a little annoying. And it was really, it was kind of weird because he actually, they thought he made the cut on initial reporting, but they just reported it wrong. Uh, and he, he missed the cut, which is a little tilting. So I do have Scheffler as the best play. And when I, when I run, you know, when I run my Sabres and Bills, whatever, I'll just kind of like play him, whatever. But in my, in my big buy-ins or whatever, I'm, go, I'm going to take a shot. And ownership fade Scheffler and go go to Finau, but I do like I do like Scheffler and Finau, and then Burns and Henley, and not really so much uh, Hideki. Yeah, um, so I I have them all on my list except for Henley, um, but I think that if I had to pick one, I do. Unfortunately, I think it would be Scheffler. Uh, I like the idea of, of of the Finau thing. The problem is, I think everybody's like it looks like the ownership is 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 pretty high there still. But it is a discount. You know, you are getting a discounted price and stuff if you played him as your top guy. But I, I like I, I like Scheffler and Burns the best. Um, and I, I I'll include Hideki in my pool. The one guy I don't have right now is Henley. I think I'll just pass on the. It's just you know it's one of those things. It's it's a little hard for me to get my head around the like you're used to seeing Henley at at four k cheaper three three k cheaper than these some of these guys. And it's just hard for me to get my head around about how I could play him unless I could somehow find a way to play two spend ups, which I think is going to be a little bit tricky today. Cause while there's some value that I'm always looking for, it's not like guys I love in the six K range, which usually is where I try to try to find some different things. So that's why I'm having a little trouble with it. What are your thoughts in the, in the nine K range here? So the reason why I kind of like Henley here is because, because Aaron wise is projected to be like the second best play on the slate. Um, he always does. I mean, he always just projects really well and, he always gets owned. I have him like 23% ownership. And I, I, I think that if you pay the extra hundred for Henley, which is certainly going to feel more uncomfortable because of 10 K and mm-hmm. get like half the ownership, I think it's probably not the worst idea in the world, but, but I, I think that wise is, you know, look, I'm, again, on straight numbers, he's my second best overall guy on the slate and he's being owned as, as commensurate with that. But the next guy I have in the nine K only have two other guys. I really have interest in the nine K range uh, is I have Maverick McNeely. But again, like he, I got him at like twenty percent. He looks like he's going to be owned too. And another one who's going to be owned too is, is Taylor Montgomery. Like I put seventeen percent plus. So, uh, no, nothing real earth shattering in the nine K range. You know, Wise Montgomery, uh, the other guys said, and McNeely. And I didn't get to the other guys. So if you get to the get to the other guys, then then we could talk about it. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I, I, I don't, I'm not very familiar with Taylor Montgomery. Um, and it just sort of it just sort of caught me off guard seeing him so popular at a thing at a high price. He's been like incredibly solid, uh, obviously. I think he hasn't finished outside of the top 15 in his last what 10 events. Um now some of those are corn fairy, but still. Um so I, I guess that I have to be open to that one. I just don't know. I just don't know as much about him. I have to dig a little deeper. Um, I, I agree. The guys you said, uh, McNeely, uh, I think makes sense. I understand the Aaron Wise thing, but I I think also I I sort of tempted to fade that and uh the other guys i have are jason day and, and thagala um i think the gala is as the as, a, as the significantly lower on than everybody else in this range is uh is interesting to me but that's just a strictly an ownership play and that you know i'm betting on the the long-term talent and all that uh what do you got in the eight case you got three guys to discuss um one of them, I finally get to a couple of guys rated under 10%. So the guy that's not under 10% is Taylor Pendrith. I have him, at, he's at 12%. He's kind of like my top 8K guy, but barely. Guy I have right underneath him, I'm, not that he's going to be low owned, but at least I have him a little bit under 10% is, is Keith Mitchell. Um, I got him. And then and then the guy that, that I think is 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 going to be maybe, maybe not to 5, but at least I think will be under 10 at least. Is is a guy though, you know, we played before, but you know, some people don't like to play him for some reason. Is Sebastian Munoz um at 8,200. So 
that's the other guy that I'll give out in, in the 8K range. So it would be for me, Hendrick again, kind of on the edge of being chalk. Mitchell sort of on the edge of being chalk. And Munoz, you know, not that he's going to be unowned, but maybe he'll be a little less owned than the other. Yeah, um, I I, I kind of like that. Uh, the guy I, in my order of, of the guys I like, I have Siwoo as my as my. I, I I I don't mind playing Siwoo here at low ownership. I know that the courses and everything people try to just use him for you know certain courses. I I I still like Siwoo. I believe in the talent and everything, and I think just lower ownership is always going to catch my eye. Um, Davis Riley is probably my favorite guy in this range, but he's probably going to be the highest owned. Um, Pendrith would be my next one. And Hadwin is the Hadwin and Munoz are the other two that I had written down. I didn't have the Keith Mitchell or Taylor Moore, even though I don't mind them. I just didn't didn't particularly stand out for me. All right, can we do the seventy five to eight hundred to eight k? Because it's kind of hard for me to go all the way down to seven k the the seven k thing at the same time. Uh, what do you got in it? Sure, uh, I mean, you know, this is this is this this is the deal. You know, so this is this is my 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 top overall seven k, my fourth overall play on the slate is Dean Burmester and he's 7,600 and people are like, who? And then I look and he's 16% on plus, you know, like, like he's a, uh, this is, this is, you know, this is, this is what we're dealing with here. Um, the, the next one, I think I could sell you one a little bit better. Um, and, and he's not going to be unknown either, but he's a guy that you played before you, I think you like is Patrick Rogers. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's gotten his act together a little bit and it's 7,800. I have still, still 10%, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, so those are the top two 7K guys I have, 7,500 and up. But if you go down a little bit in, in my rankings and, and you save a little bit in ownership, I'll give you a couple others. Um, Lee Hodges, but even him, like 11%. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Gordon, 11%. You can't get a break here. Smalley, Wyndham Wynn, Wynn, Clark. Okay, I, I'll go with – no, I can't even go to 7,500. So the 7,600 and up, I mean, I, I, think, I think we're kind of – I think I'm kind of chalky here, but with the guys I mentioned. Yeah. Um, I, I, the, 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 the one other guy who I have, cause I, I have Burmester as, as the, the and, right. and Gordon as the best two um, with Rogers underneath them, but I'll, I'll take a shot on Aaron Rye at, at 75 um, okay. just to get off the board. So that's, that's the other one. Well, that that, I, well I thought that was cheap. I thought you were going 76 and up. I, I oh, I'm sorry. I was going 75 and up, but, but my, my bad. I like, yeah. I like it though. I like it. I like it. I like yeah. It. All right, let's go. Well, let's go. Let's do the the seven K to seventy four hundred, I guess, or seventy five. All right. So the top seven seventy four hundred and below, or seven hundred and below, that I have is actually less than ten percent owned. So that's good. So it, it would be Brendan Steele at seventy two hundred. Mm -hmm. I have him at six percent or so, and then I got Sepp Straka, who rates to be like thirteen percent, and that's pretty much all I got. So then, then, then you're, then you're dumpster diving like Luke list at 5%. So may, maybe, maybe if I had to recommend with, with somebody with like ownership and everything considered, I think Brandon Steele would probably be my top overall from that range. Yeah. I, interesting. I, I have, uh, I have Straka and list were the two guys I had circled. Um, or you know, for me, that's like a, the second passing the first two tests of, of whether I want to play them. Um, I don't mind taking a shot on Cameron champ here. Uh, I think that there's upside there, and I think the ownership is is kind of sucking me in a little bit. Uh, List and, and Steven Yeager, for similar reasons, guys who were good on the Corn Ferry Tour, who are cheap enough to, and, and capable of making runs. Uh, but I, I prefer the list to Yeager. Um, the other one I need to talk to you about real quick is it's just and it ha it's been happening for a while now, but just it's weird to see Justin Rose seventy two hundred in these kind of fields. But he's not the same guy. But does that have? To, I mean, I don't know. What is your take on things like that? Because I don't. I never know what to do. I really feel like I want to take a shot there, and I just, I just think he's not healthy. I guess that's the real answer. But I don't know. Just when you look at sort of a softer field, and you know, aside from the very top, is Justin Rose that bad at seventy two hundred? Maybe he is. I don't know. That's I will. I will. I will give you like this is like full disclosure, right? So yeah. So I have Rose as like my thirty first like best. Player. I mean, I really don't have him much in play at all, um, except that he looks to be 3% owned, 4% owned or something like that. Right, right. And then what happens is, just so you know, when I run my I, – I did kind of a weird thing with my Saberson builds this week. I did – kind of hard to explain, but I did a whole dump bunch of different Saberson builds. And when all is said and done, I have 36% Justin Rose. So hmm. – 
I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> uh, but that, that probably indicates that the combination of his ownership, the fact that he has a couple of, you know, a couple of good performances somewhere in his, in his, in his back pocket that he could throw out there. You know what I mean? Uh, makes him maybe a good 150 max GPP play. So I don't know exactly why, but, but that's, that's what I personally transparency. That's it. That is what I am getting. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, based on the way I am building and the way I'm building, it's kind of, kind of cool. Like it's more of a Sabreson discussion than anything else. But the fact is I'm doing a blend of different, different, different build styles. And that's I, without knowing what it's going to get me. And it ends up with 30, with 36%, like I said, uh, Justin Rose. So I'll be rooting for whatever that take, whatever, whatever, whatever caused you to come up with that name. I'm going to be rooting for it. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah. Good luck to us on that. Yeah, good luck um, on all that. Exactly. And I know you you're not a you're not a big six K and under seven, you know, seven K and under. No, but you know what? You got some names in here. I mean, yeah. you got some names value. You know, you got uh the guy who's always the top under seven K guy, that'd be Ryan Palmer. I mean, always seems to be that guy. No, no ownership, right? They, none of these guys are more is, than 3%. isn't it a rule that we're supposed to play Ryan Palmer in Texas? I guess like, so, right? Historically, I mean the guy's in the Texas Hall of Fame. He's that's where he does most of his damage on the tour. I it just I would that's the one that stood out to me that I actually circled as like my priority play. <laughs> like and then and then I got a couple of I got Adam Svensson, Eric Van Ruyen. Um, so those are kind of like the name value guys. Hey, Smotherman's been good to me. Throw him in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh sure. Uh, that, that you named the guys basically. Uh, oh, really? Okay. Motherman, Svensson, and Palmer were, were the guys who I had, okay. I had I was going after. Um, I, I, and I tried to I tried to dig down. And is there anything else? I do think Norlander at sixty six hundred is kind of interesting. Um, and I think that uh, John Huh is okay. Uh, those are really basically like my only other guys here that I can come up with that I that I really know that well. I mean. I, I don't know. I don't feel excited about any of these other really, really low ones. Uh, somebody <laughs> I saw something when I was doing some research and people were talking about Chad Ramey and Eric Barnes. Uh, if you wanted to go way down, don't feel like really excited about that. Something called an Augusta Nunez. <laughs> Nunez was another game name I came across, but these are not guys who I know of. They were just sort of like wild card plays that I was reading other people talk about. So the ones that I would, that I would be after would be the, the Smotherman, Svensson, Palmer uh, grouping, and then I might throw Norlander into a lineup or two. All right, so let's do our little game here. Let's. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll ask the question in this way. So, Bobby, Bobby's Edward Firestone. That's not his actual middle name. That's what I like to say. <laughs> so, Bobby Edward Firestone, who is going to win the tournament? Um, sadly, I, I would prefer if my middle name was was Edward, not to what it actually is. I, I think that I, I, for me personally, I probably am taking the chalky Scheffler, but yeah, it's just a toss up for me, but I, I think Scheffler. I will go. Then, and then, then I will go. I will go Finau off of this. Cup. We'll have okay. Time. All right. So we got Scheffler and Finau. All right. Um, top guy under 10 K to make top five. I'll start with this one. And I will. I just, I just, I just. All right. We'll go with the, uh, Ooh, we didn't talk about him. So is it bad form to go over a guy that we haven't talked about? No, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Top five, Jason Day at 9,500. That's okay. I know I, I mentioned okay. it, but it's, yeah, that's. I, oh, I, you I, did I, mention it. Perfect. All right, so I'm adding him to my to the pool. Right, yeah, J Jason Day. Okay. Um, a guy who I don't play <laughs> in general is the guy who I have here. Um, my, my sneaky one is the Thigala, but I, I think Mav McNeely is the guy I like the best. Um, if I had to pick one, he's been in good form. He's been playing and yeah, I, I think he's, he's, I guess my, my other, my one, but I, I, I sort of like the day one better than, than I like. The right. day so, so under nine K to make top 10. Under nine K to, to make the top 10. I'm just grabbing my list here. Uh, uh, I like my favorite is probably Davis Riley. Yeah, like none of these guys that I have are going to actually make the top ten, which is annoying. Um, it could be top twenty for this, right? No, no, seven K oh. is top twenty. Oh yeah, 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 my bad. Uh, I'm gonna go. We can go to seven K's guys if you want. Um, uh no, I'm gonna save my seven K guy for top twenty, and go with. I'll 
I'll use, I'll go with my projections one time. I'll go with Taylor Pendrith. We're good. Okay, so I've got Pendrith on there as well, so that's good. Um, and so top so top twenty seven k. Yeah, for seven k. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not overwhelmingly excited about the chalkiness of, of some of these things. So I'm going to go on a limb here and say Sepp Straka. I'll go with Patrick Rogers. Oh, okay. Rogers. That's nice. That means I have to play Rogers. So you gave you me, gonna, you were going to play him anyway. Probably. Um, I haven't played him in a while though. Oh. But that's because I haven't played in a while. And finally now so he's pick, your, pick, so pick, so pick your favorite six K guy to make the cut. Oh, you know, it's, it's Ryan Palmer. Or somebody else. Ryan Palmer by a landslide. Yeah. Um, yes, I am not going to bring this other dude up. So yeah, I I will. Um, all right, I'll go. I'll go with uh, with uh, what's his name? Uh, Van Royen, I guess, to make the cut. Oh, okay. So so how about that? how about a nine k and over to miss the cut? Okay, so nine k over to miss the cut. I actually had a couple guys that I was thinking about. Well, Grillo. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's out, obviously. Um, Weirdly, the guy I like is the most logical answer, which is the gala. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna live on the edge and and say that Domin goes from from top seat to to not missing the cut. How about that? You totally faded out. I had no idea who you said. Joel Domin. I'm going for wow. I'm going, I'm going for the other thing. Yeah, that is so sick because that is exactly who I was taking. Love it. All right. So yep. So I will go with. And we can do this. Oh, you know what I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna go with uh, Denny McCarthy at 92. Okay, so nice. Um, so those are the guys who are gonna run one two in the tournament. Uh, McCarthy and who's the guy you said? Uh, uh, Domin. And Domin. Domin goes back to back, and I look like an idiot. Exactly. Domin was what I had him in my 888 last week. I had him everywhere. He was the chalkiest guy on the slate. Um, <laughs> anyway. and, and and this week, then you, you will pick him to miss the cut and win the tournament at eight yeah. percent ownership. I love it. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Uh, I guess that'll do it. Uh, you know, yeah. it's re really funny. There's got to be like a name for this in DFS. So I built like all my lineups already, and I have like one or two with Grillo in it. So like, if if I had like fifty percent Grillo, I would just rebuild everything, right? Mm -hmm. But because they're only like a couple, I'll just I'll just swap. You know what I mean? I'll just I'll yeah. just I'll just I'll just put I'll just put another one in for him. You know what I mean? Like uh, there's got to be what's that? What's the cutoff where you don't have to rebuild all your lineups as opposed to just swapping? Is it like ten percent, three percent, seven percent? No, I think it's, I mean you have you have swappable guys. The problem is the two guys you just named to miss the cut are the guys who are surrounding him. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, maybe maybe you play Matt Neesmith or Siwoo Kim instead. No, but I mean in general, you know, like what? How many lineups do you need him to be in so that you don't just straight swap and you have to rebuild everything? You know. Uh, oh right, right, right. Yeah, I, th I think that I think that if you had him in like twenty percent, you want to do it with at least half of those, right? Yeah, I think, I think so. so. Um, All right. Well, this should be fun. I'm, I'm excited to have a week of golf here. And uh, yeah, sheets. Any final? Any final? That's a, that's a really good point you made, by the way. Like I'm looking here at this Grillo lineup I have. And, and, and the only guy I'm gonna place him with the, like Damon's right below, right? Nice, yeah, I got really nice funny. Or, or, that, or, or I'm leaving like 600 on the table with with a 13 percent owned guy, you know. So and with uh, Justin Rose, who we were not sure if he's even gonna finish the event. Justin Rose is in this lineup already. I know, I know. I said, oh, I said right, right, right. in the lineup. I'm just saying you're right. You're, de right. you're de definitely not gonna be duped on that one. I don't think. No, I, 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 I hope not. <laughs> I hope not too. I don't think there's any. I don't know anybody else who's, who's doing that one exactly. Um, all right, man. Well, this is fun. Uh, good luck to everybody. And uh, hopefully we'll see uh, see some winners this week. We'll be in Discord and I will post my core plays a little bit later. Good luck, everybody. All right. Good luck. I'll